Where is Congo? Congo is another land that has indigenous people. The people that are in Haiti are indigenous to the region today that's known as Congo and Senegal and Gambia and Nigeria. That's where they are from. I am not, I cannot say that I am not, uh, indigenous to uh, Canada, okay? I'm not indigenous to Argentina. I'm not indigenous to Australia. I'm not indigenous to Europe. I'm indigenous to this land where I am. I'm here in my own indigenous lands. Ashley Weaver says, I guess I'm not sure what you're saying. Everyone go back to their indigenous lands. You know what? As I said, when a person or a creature is displaced, then they become what is called an invasive, invasive species. Invasive. So even though humans are all the same species today, okay, we don't have any Homo erectus or Denisovians or Neanderthals, or any of these other species of, of, of human beings. We only have one human race. We only have one human species, but within those human species are different indigenous varieties. The varieties of those people are caused by the lands that they are indigenous to. How many hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of years have they been in those lands? Okay. Just because the United States is the most rich country in the world and it most advanced and has uh, mil most military bases around the world and all those things uh, doesn't mean that every motherfucker and their cousin can go there and claim that to be indigenous land. It also does not mean that because there are indigenous people there that they can go and colonize the rest of the world to be American Indians either. If the person is not indigenous and they're living in a land where there are indigenous people that they need to get with the culture of the indigenous people, that, the, the land that they're living with. So if you're not happy with that and you want to live on your own way, go back to your freaking country where you are indigenous too and and live there happily according to your ancestors it's very simple trader mo welcome to the stage hello um, how are you um, i'm doing well i just i actually just woke up and your live was the first thing that popped up on my tiktok so uh I wanted to ask, right, because I think I understand what you're saying, um, but I want to be sure. So are you advocating that non-Indigenous people living in what we call the U.S. need to, what's the word I'm looking for, not assimilate, but respect and maybe politically defer to Indigenous people here in the Americas? Yes, if they want okay. to survive, okay. if they want to okay. go extinct, they can go on their own little colonial ways, but they are going to go extinct. You think that the, the COVID epidemic or pandemic it was a pandemic. It was not just epidemic, but it was a pandemic. You think the COVID pandemic is the first thing that's going to going to hit their little, you know, um, uh, rat nest? Because that's what they got. All these parking lots, all these places that so, that seem to be so well maintained, mm -hmm. they're actually breeding human extinction. When you erase the native culture, when you erase the native flora and the fauna and d mm -hmm. create imbalances of the environment and of the people, mm -hmm. the earth begins to rebel. And the things that were your I... friend, like the sun, like the wind, like the rain, the water, and the things that start to turn against you. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what happens. So there's a choice. Okay? If you want to be around in the next 5,000 years, get with indigenous people. If you don't, 
keep it on the way the colonial way that you've been going it's very simple um so well i i want to let you finish i don't want to talk over you yeah i'm trying to figure out what these people here are saying um only mad hatter says only colonized people believed in land ownership and borders uh mad hatter i understand you're also commie fascist or maybe you're a fascist commie i don't know either one um but as you see this is not about personal property this is not a personal property argument this is not about political borders this is about preserving indigenous populations and sometimes because of the situation we have had to depend on uh artificial borders okay so as i was saying to kami fascist bgp that in past times american indian reservations were used to lock in native peoples to prevent us from freely moving in our native lands. But <clears throat> since the invasion of colonial masses taking over entire swaths of land, replacing the food sources, replacing everything, uh, uh, MMIW, right? Missing and unalive indigenous women and men mm. we have had to say you know what we're going to close the door to our house even this colonizer house that we put in and we're going to start bringing order we're going to prevent the flow of uh harmful substances whether it be alcohol or whether it be uh you know uh poisons or whatever it is mm. We're going to we're going to use these artificial borders for our own protection for the time being so that we can recuperate from the hundreds of years of abuse. OK, so don't come in here with a false argument, a, a red herring, because that's what that is. It's a logical fallacy to be saying, oh, indigenous people don't believe in borders. Yes, we do. Uh, indigenous people don't don't did not practice political uh you know artificial uh let's say delineations artificial delineations but natural delineations of rivers of mountain ranges of of of, of oceans and so on and so forth yes we did practice those yes we did respect those mm -hmm. and and we had between our nations uh overlapping states okay so we ha were the places where we overlapped, depending on who was belonging to which clan of which nation, then the person, if they uh, did something that was disagreeable, that would be taken up in the council of their respective nation. And if there had to be a delegation sent from one nation to the other, or if they were to be dealt with in the, in the nation which they did whatever it was they, they were claiming, it would be a, 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 with rules that they were already familiar with. So there were boundaries. So you're using right. a red herring by saying borders, but boundaries were definitely respected, just like emotional boundaries, you know, in a relationship that are respectful that you don't put, uh, you know, let's say if there's a husband and wife, right? They don't sleep with a border wall between them, but they do have boundaries that they respect their partner their wife their husband okay so mm -hmm. to say that oh their husband and wife they don't have any boundaries bullshit that is an mm -hmm. abusive relationship and that does not belong in any kind of human culture so um i, I kind of just want to jump into what you're saying um i i agree with you right every indigenous society, whether it be here on Turtle Island, whether it be on the continent of Africa, whether it be Asia, whether it be, you know, any place that humans live, we all have delineations of space, right? Um, 
sacred sites overlap sometimes. Um, but typically, nations, indigenous nations rather, agree on hunting grounds. They agree on certain spaces to be used, the times that they're used so people aren't over hunting and overlapping too much on a particular resource. Um, <clears throat> the extent of the use, like all of these things are carefully negotiated and agreed upon and uh -huh. have been for millennia. I know, for example, um, among Yoruba people in what we call Nigeria today, the Oba or the king had very strict rules as to what plants could be harvested, how many animals could be hunted in a given period of time. Um, I found out through a friend of mine that there's a silk producing worm like the ones they have in Asia, in West Africa. And the Yoruba people used to produce this silk garment um, before colonization. And the way it worked is that the butterflies, they weren't bred, but they would grow a forest and the butterflies would come. The caterpillars would be born and the caterpillars would spin the silk. So they would harvest that silk and then they would leave it alone for 25 years. They would plant another forest and leave the recently harvested forest alone for an entire generation and then repeat the process so you never ran out of the silk producing worm right we didn't have to breed it specifically because we managed the ecosystem well enough to support a population that could produce enough silk to produce the clothes that they wanted to wear right mm -hmm. um you used to have so <laughs> this is something i also found out recently but like Big game animals, like leopards, for example. Apparently, in the old days, any leopard that was killed by a man belonged to the king. And you had to give the skin and the claws and teeth to the king, because if you didn't, that was considered a capital punishment. I believe that it existed specifically so that people were not overhunting all of the big cats, right? Because if you look at pre-colonial African land management practices and the populations of the big five, as they call them, right? Elephants, giraffes, lions, leopards, and um, what's, what's the water buffalo. They all existed in mass numbers, large enough to support human populations, at least. Uh -huh. It wasn't until the advent of colonialism and the mismanagement land practices that Europeans brought over that those started becoming an issue. So I agree with you that having indigenous sovereignty over the land and having indigenous sovereignty over your resources is important. We know that it's the first level of self-determination for any group of people. Um, uh -huh. I also don't believe you're wrong for wanting to, I don't want to, I hope I don't, I don't mean anything negative by this, but you know, sectioning off the community, right? If you want to make sure that your population redoubles, right? If you want to recover from the last 500 years of enslavement, torture, disease, famine, and the absolute stripping of your lands away from you, you kind of have to keep it in house like you were saying, right? Um, I know I, I'm reading a lot of the comments and I think people are misconstruing what you're saying. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be insular so that you can preserve culture, language, history, art, music, dances without interference from other groups of people. That isn't in and of itself a crime. You're simply well, advocating not racist either. Because because the same the same rights and the same freedoms that I'm uh wanting for my own people, I also want for the other people within their own lands. Right. right. You're advocating for sovereignty and community determination. And that's not yes. racist. That's not, I mean, not to me, right? I don't consider that problematic because we know the history, or at least we should. I'm an epidemiologist <laughs> and I've studied disease. Mm -hmm. And when I was in college and I was writing dissertations, I actually studied smallpox and its effect on the new world, quote unquote, when the Europeans first arrived. And it's not, there's no modern day equivalent 
to what happened to your ancestors, right? The amount of death caused by disease, specifically among indigenous turtle islanders, was enough to change the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They brought down the amount <laughs> of carbon dioxide because they took so many people and destroyed them. Um, the echoes of these diseases echoed in every indigenous society. I like to think a lot of the Inca, specifically, um, out, is it, wait, I'm sorry. No, I'm right. Atahualpa, his father, and his brother. So, Atahualpa, as we know, was the son of the Sapa Inca, and in 1522, I believe, they went on a campaign to go and conquer a specific set of land. Everything was going fine until Atahualpa's father, I can't remember his name and I don't want to butcher it, but the Sapa Inca before him got sick. He got sick during... Cancers, um, all types of uh, lymphomas, um, inflammationary diseases, allergen diseases mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. foods that are not native to our people and, right. and, right. and exposure to environmental uh, contamination. Okay, right. the fact that we have anybody left that is any percentage of native is a freaking miracle. And then you're going to have some freaking commie fascists come around saying, just let the floodgates open and come with another wave of erasure. Now in the uh, form of expansionist hamsters from some other land. They are expansionist hamsters. These individuals come into our native lands here in Dominican Republic and breed like ro roaches. To our native lands here in Dominican Republic and breed like roaches. And they want enough, they want, they do not want uh, to ha take responsibility for their own family planning. They reject all type of uh, population control and they want the native people of Quisqueya to pay the bill for their medical bills, to put their children to school, to do everything. Whereas the government's money should be going to our native peoples to restore the damage that has been done to us, even by the Dominican government that has allowed certain fascists like the dictator Trujillo, who also carried out unalivings of our family members in order to force the uh, to the coercive sales of native lands to multinational companies, something that must be restored, something that must be the harm that must be undone. Okay. So, ma'am, I, I apologize. I think I was a little late to the conversation. Who are these people coming into the Dominican Republic and eating up all of the resources? They are from the neighboring country called Haiti. And they are 98% non-indigenous people. Their population is made of a genotype that is 90% Af West African and 10% European. And they are, they are trying to occupy all of our native lands. And they are here on social media saying every day that they are coming to take over the whole land and that they are going to be part of Africa. And we are telling them this land does not belong to Africa. This land belongs to the native peoples of the Caribbean. This is indigenous Kiskean Arawak land. This is not African land. And they also have African people of West Africa from Equatorial Guinea, from Nigeria, from Cameroon, from uh, 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 Congo. You know, they have them coming around saying that, yes, the Caribbean belongs to Africa. Hmm. They are they are ethno fascists. They are trying to extend their reach. And look at the stupid Nigerian government. They just got a I don't know how much I think twenty five billion dollar loan. They had all of these stupid uh, people on social media for years uh, complaining about the Chinese uh, loan system of the Belt and Road Initiative in Africa, mm. that it was abusive, abusive, abusive. And then they 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 link themselves in an IMF loan that is like 
has a ridiculous amount of interest. So they have to pay like four or five times at the very least the amount, the principal on the loan. So they have burdened their people for the next 50 years, way after any of these politicians are currently in power. So they, they themselves, they are trying to, to expand their corruption and their mismanagement in Africa to the Caribbean, as if we don't already have indigenous governance over here. Mind your giraffe, mind your uh, water buffaloes and leopards and all that. Take care of that over there. We have our own land here. We have our own animals and birds that we need to take care of here. What is wrong with that? I don't particularly think there's anything wrong with it. Next um, level says, so you don't think after all the time Haitians have lived there that we didn't mix. You did not mix. Your genome proves that. By the time <laughs> that, listen, Haitian people came 200 years after everybody else. You've only been here for two or three hundred years, since uh, mid to late 16 and 1700s. Your people were not here. You came over here as pure blood Congolese people. That's why you, you still uh, practice your Congolese religious beliefs. That's why you still practice your Congolese dances. That's why you still speak your Congolese language. In Taino people here, we have some, a few words here and there, and we have some place, we have place names all around the country that are native uh, place names. That thing we did keep. But your Ms. practices, Behaker? the culture is 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 non-indigenous. I'm sorry, uh, read Dominicana. Did you want to say something? Not really. I'm just um, trying to listen to see what's really going on. Um, I did. Um, I'm a I consider myself a Dominican activist. Right. And what a lot of people don't know um, you know, there's a lot of propaganda going around. So a lot of people don't know that we're literally experiencing the worst um, immigration crisis from Haiti and DR. Um, we're, I don't know, three, four million Haitians living in DR, occupying, um, you know, private land um, that they shouldn't be occupying. Um, like you said, um, overwhelming our hospitals, our schools. Um, but I did want to mention that, you know, throughout time, because we have been letting them just migrate freely onto our side of the island, a lot of our indigenous traditions have been getting um, compromised, right? So a lot of like Dominican Santeria, um, a lot of Dominican Santeria actually, you know, contained a lot of indigenous practices, you know, like the practice of like soba, a lot of the natural remedies were actually Taino customs that we inherited. But because Haitians have been appropriating Dominican Santeria, they've been mixing it with their voodoo. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, exactly. They, so they've they also, so a lot of like the Palo music, they've been mixing it with Gaga. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's it's not only like they're diluting you know a lot of poor dominicans do mix with haitians this is something we gotta admit so it's not only that they're diluting our dna our indigenous dna they're also erasing our indigenous practices and our customs they break into our national parks and they burn them down for to make coal because they need coal they don't have electricity in haiti they don't have a, a reliable power grid so they break into our national parks and they decimate our forests. Okay. So this is the, this is the shit that we're dealing with these people and all we get is called racist. You know, they're depleting our natural resources. They have no respect for our culture, for our history. Okay, they're entitled, they migrate illegally and then they're, they're, they're entitled. Yeah, um, someone asked here, well, don't we have some black in us too? Listen, and, and, and there, are pe there are native people with African admixture, but having some... No, we do, we do, we the do. Fact that, the fact that, some, that a native person has an African admixture does not cancel out the native part of that person. We are talking about people who have no native admixture 
replace no and then you have haitians saying that they're that they're the original tainos like how the fuck are you the original taino Hmm. Uh, next level says you have your own semi you don't have no semi next level you see this is this is a cultural appropriator right here this is you see this person next level making this comment saying that they have a semi they don't have a semi 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 does not come from congo there was a person that came on my live um <clears throat> yesterday and he was from nigeria and he was saying that the hopi or uh zuni uh kachina doll that that came from nigeria mm -hmm. i don't understand why people do not understand the concept of cultural overlap um not speaking to anybody on the panel but to say that the hopi practice is nigerian is asinine to me just because we have a similar concept that exists in West and Central Africa does not mean that that's the source, right? Just because we have concepts that are similar in nature does not mean that that is the source. Things can independently evolve in different places in the world. Concepts overlap all of the time and i'm i'm sorry if i seem like i'm getting upset i just don't understand why people can he gets his education by reading coffee grinds or something like that you know because i i don't see how any person can think that uh 300 000 years ago uh ethnicities that were then are are present today there wasn't the, the ethnicities that are from 3000 years ago don't exist now. The people, even though, you know, the, the gene, the genome has survived, obviously, right? But the ethnicities, no. There's no ethnicity today that someone could say comes from 300,000 years ago. 700,000, I mean, 70,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago, yeah. Because we know Australians have that. We know the people in, um, in uh, where is that place? In, in India, you know those people, they have, they traced their genome to 70,000 years ago. But more oh, than 100,000 years people? ago, no. Yeah, the cent, so, what is it called? Uh, Sentino, Sentinelese. Sentinelese? Sentinelese. Mm. Yes. So, yeah. I guess this, uh, and I apologize, I'm not, Dominican, I'm not Haitian. I'm a, I'm African American. I guess is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I focus a lot on reconnecting with African indigeneity, right? Um, I've done a lot of research into different concepts that exist on the continent, and the reason that I'm bringing that up is because there is a lot. Of overlap in the philosophical sense between Turtle Island and West Africa. I'm not saying that they came together, right? I'm not saying we got it from each other. I'm just saying that there are a lot of concepts that exist on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean, which I always kind of found ironic. Um, that said, <laughs> I do, I wanted to point out just one thing. Um, Haitian people are more Beninese than they are Congolese. Um, same thing with most people who ended up in the Caribbean. It's more, and I'm not, it's a small distinction. I hope I'm not being nitpicky or annoying to you. I just wanted to point out that the voodoo and Vodun beliefs are mm -hmm. Benin, Edo, Ewe speaking or I'm sorry, uh, phone and Ewe speaking beliefs. And the phone uh -huh. and the Ewe are both in what we would call Benin Republic. There is overlap mm -hmm. in Nigeria as well, um, but it is a distinctly Beninese concept. The Congolese concept of religion is what they call Kulinga. Um, Kulinga is essentially what they believe is that 
this world that we stand in and the world that the ancestors pass on to are mirrors of each other. So if we stand upright, then the ancestors stand opposite to us. So if I'm upright in this world, they would be upside down from my perspective. Our heads would be touching in a metaphysical context. Um, uh. And as a matter of fact, I, the Congolese people held that the ocean they must go back to their land. They prov they have lived here with us here for two, three, two hundred years, okay? Uh, and they have proven time and again that they have no will to assimilate. Their constitution says they are a nation of black people. That there is no, it literally says in the Haitian constitution that there is no other ethnicity within their nation, except for black people of the African descent. They say they, they, it, is, it is practically illegal to call oneself any other ethnicity, whether they are Taino, whether they're European, whether they're, they're Asian, it says there will be no acknowledgement of any other ethnicity. That would include the native peoples. That's the, that's the 1804 constitution, right? Yes. Precisely. Yeah. Okay, Trader Mo, thank you so much for your uh, valuable input. This is very, 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 appreci very much appreciated. Will they go peacefully? Um, well, you know, they can become extinct, okay, or they can go peacefully. So they have choices. Go back to their indigenous lands. You know, I was living in North America for some time. And I even had the op I had even the opportunity to live in Europe, but I decided to go back to my homelands, my indigenous lands, because that is the land that I inherit uh, by by law and by by tradition. Um, well, this isn't the 1600s anymore, but we can still make it uh, the 21st century. It's the 21st century. Uh, you know, if if Nigeria or Benin or Congo was was um, if that was uh, you know like Dubai, you can be sure the Haitians would be booking the first flight. Okay. King Kesh the Coward, thank you for joining. You know, I wonder if, um, because many, I've seen many lives where some of the, um, like mixed race or um, light skin South Africans or Africans of other, other regions that are mixed, because there's even um, the mixed people or the light skinned people in West Africa, a lot of them are called like half castes. Right. And I hear the conversations. They, can, 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 people can, 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 I'm going to leave you here for a second. Um, I'll be right back. I have to walk my dog, but you just uh, hold the fort down. I'll be right back. All right. So a lot of those, a lot of this conversation, right? It It's identical, right? They'll, they'll say like, oh, these people are half cats. They don't belong here. They, they should go back to where they come from, right? There is this um, mixed South African guy, right? He's half Khoisan, half, uh, I think, German. And I hear him in African spaces all the time, and they call him, hey, like, they call him refugee. Then he should go back to Europe when he's been there multiple generations, right? So it's completely fine to have this conversation. Um, as long as you're in Africa speaking to other people, cool. But whenever the roles are reversed, all of a sudden a person gets accused of being racist, right? So that's like logically is not consistent. You know, and it's, it's Leslie Weaver. Hold on. 
one because I hear your tone. No, I don't think um, the same the same rules don't apply, right? You're comparing like apples and oranges because the same is being said to the colonizers, to the people that are um, they're causing these problems on a systematic level because of, you know all of this comes from the top down. It's being done also by um, some Europeans. You understand? So if if that is said right about the European, no problem. Anybody, but anybody else who who assists a European, let's say these groups of people coming from uh, Haiti that are acting as pawns, that are aggressing upon the local people, if the conversation is had about them, then the conversation, the tone changes. You know, and I think. Um, Actually, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm assuming. I don't think it's that that extreme. Exciting for for any violent actions taken is, in my book, is prohibited. Right? It's, it's not. That's not the right approach. That's not the right tone of this conversation. But as a people, as a people, because it's been they've been so long on the land and things haven't been stable. It is almost like it's self-conflicting. You see what I'm saying? So they're coming to a demise as a people due to the lack of adaptation to the environment. You see? Like, it's almost like the environment is aggression upon them. So if they go to another environment where it's probably closer tied to their, their culture or their people, their system, maybe that would help them continue on and grow more. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but you're saying we all just better get along, but that's not what's happening right now. That's not what's happening. And it's been, G side has been going on because it's only, the concern is only one way. You see what I'm saying? Similar to how some people, only with certain groups of people die that are, are tied to a certain political affiliation, do you care? Like, no, it's all, it's been happening. The underline's been happening. Look, look at the reports. Look at what's going on in Haiti and look at what's going on in the, in the DR by the hands of the machete. Groups of the same people are doing these acts of violence, but it doesn't get called out because of the, the your eyes are tuned to be biased. You're not looking at the facts. You see what I'm saying? The aggression is already there. That's not okay, but it's already there. How do you stop it? You got to call it out. You got to call it, be consistent about it. Because if you're talking about um, violence, then be consistent. Call it out for what it is. Dominicans are not going into into Haiti and unaliving um, Haitians in Haiti. It's not happening. Why are Haitians going into DR and unaliving Dominicans? But then Dominicans are called racist when they want to get them out of there because they're unalive in their people. So you got to you got to figure you got to figure it out. You're you can't be biased when it comes to um, morality. You can't. I was like, no, it's OK if these groups of people do it. These other groups of people cannot defend themselves. Like that is completely insane. It's completely insanity. Yeah, you see, when you say these words, they went extinct. Yeah, you're you're problematic. What you're doing, so look look at the comments, um, Weaver. Look at that dude, soul is. See, these are the people that's trying to commit G-side. You see, they went extinct. Therefore, they could go ahead and erase them and remove them. And well, they were already extinct, so it doesn't matter. You see what I'm saying? So it's, listen, either you're against colonialism, invasion, grape and pillaging, or you're not. Or because a lot of you are just against it if it comes from certain groups of people, but you don't care if other groups of people do it. Like either nobody can or only some groups of people can. Like you got to figure that out. Your morality is like all mixed up. Like a lot, a lot of you do that. I, I see it. Like I got to stop saying that because the, the, these populations are, are have been at risk. You know what I mean? They keep to themselves. They don't really intermingle. They're really meek people. 
But people like you, when you spew this venom out of your mouth, saying, no, they went extinct, you're playing the role of the colonizer. I don't want to hear nothing from your mouth. You should complain about nothing. You're not part of this conversation. If I had my power, I would kick you. You were demonic. Get out of here. You declare person gone. You see what I'm saying? What's going on now? Like, nah, this uh, soul, the, the soul, soulless is saying Taino's went extinct in the Caribbean, where, you know what I mean? Yeah, the that's, that's, that's thanks to people like sellouts, like commie fascist notorious BGP. That's what she's, uh, she's encouraging. And then at the same time, she gaslights us saying that, no, this is not true. They're just my brother, brown people, my brother, uh, what does she say? She called them people of color. They're just my people of color. These and crazy they, politics, I'm tired of them. I'm tired of these crazy politics, man, for real. It's crazy to me. I wonder the thing. She says that indigenous lands belong to all people of color. All right, cool. But you know what I mean? Keep that, keep Sorry, that, same, told, keep that same energy. Told, Keep that same energy with the when it when it comes to um when it comes to China. Africa and the Chinese and the Chinese yeah keep that same energy. They, they, so got you're one point, me, how, they got one point four billion Chinese and I think one point well one point two billion East Indians. Keep that energy. Don't complain. Cause you know <laughs> they better they better cut it out. Because the thing is, they make an argument against themselves. They don't realize it. They make an argument against themselves. When you start talking that talk, you're just opening up the doors for more BS. That's what you're doing. And it's what I told people like BGP. You know, I spoke to her about that. I was like, let go of the commie leftist propaganda. I'm like, please. Like, when is it that some of these people are going to wake up and realize that they are the the new age colonialist. They are the the new age devils, spreading all of this misinformation, man, emotionally manipulating people. Like they don't get it. I want BGP to come up here, and I want to whip her ass. Hey, no, 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 no. BGP, leave BGP alone. That's it. They just no, talk. No, 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 no. I will whip that woman's ass. <laughs> I give her a public flogging. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> hey guys, share and like this live. Share and like. That's yeah, eight. That's easy. Her coward, uh, logical fallacy, brainwash, a whipping. Yeah, she wanted to talk about the borders are not are not part of indigenous culture. Says the says the veteran, right? The military. Mm -hmm. It's crazy when I hear it from from uh, from vets, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like, this is the thing. If I am I gonna go to West Africa and tell them that they should not practice ethos ethnocentricity? Should mm -hmm. I tell them that that they should abandon their laws of of keeping uh, clan? Uh, ownership of their lands and their families? Is that my place to go and invade another indigenous people and tell them how to run their shit? It's almost like that's what they want. That's why I keep telling you it's worrisome. Fitness goal says the whole island belongs to Haitian. Okay, cool. What, but who are the Haitians now? Let's define that. Who are the Haitians? Right? The, the, the Haitians, the the name, the per, the people who came up with the name Haiti, yeah, 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 yeah. You could you could say it belongs to the Haitians, not these people that are in the Republic of Haiti, though. That's not them. Ben, the people from Benin, the people from Congo, the people from Nigeria, they're not Haitian. No, no, no. Because the thing is, the 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 name ID came from a map, right? From that the Spaniards wrote, and they got the name ID from the Taino people. They not come from these uh, French, these uh, dark-skinned French people that claim to be African and indigenous, but they're dark-skinned French people essentially. You got You guys got to cut it out. You guys got to understand that people get programmed. 
It is what it is. I understand that you're that you guys are prejudiced and you only look at skin color. The soul is. People, the soul but you is. have to look at the you have to look at the character, study the history. Their book is called The Black Jacobins. Where are the Jacobins from? France. The Jacobins are from France. Why do they pr proudly declare their leaders the Black Jacobins? Because they identify themselves with the French revolutionary culture, not the African revolutionary culture. Get it out your mind, man. Once you study the history and you study the French history, right, especially during the time of the French Revolution, which was the initial, the initial spark to the Haitian Revolution. Once you realize that, then we can have a converse, an honest conversation as to what was the Haitian Revolution. The problem is you guys romanticized this uh, Black Panther type of ideology, right? Wakanda, written by a white man. Haiti, ran by a white man. Get out of here with that. The same thing. The story of the Haitian Revolution, ran by a white man. The whole ideas, the concepts, white man, Frenchman. That's what that is. Once I realized that, it just, it finally hit me. That's I, was, the I knew it. I knew. The minute I saw the 1804 Haitian Constitution, I said, this was written by a white man. You know why? Exactly. Because, because the papal bull of 1452 and 1455 says any people that are known by the term black are perpetual slaves to the europeans so the minute i saw that they said our entire country shall be known as black no other ethnicity is allowed i knew it i said this is this is a, a frenchman a, a trip on a papal bull that's why none of their people that are under that constitution that's why i would never i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't sign myself or my family to be the part of the Haitian nation if they were to promise the whole entire half of the world to me. They, um, in 1987, they changed all of the things that looked kind of funny within the constitution, but the 1804 constitution clearly affirmed that Haiti is independent from colonial powers, right? Colonial powers, that's it. And it established that it was the first independent black republic in the world. Here's the thing. Did you know why? Because Napoleon wanted to take the power away from all of the governors and all of the oligarchs that were managing these territories. Did you know that? And the leaders within these territories that belonged to the French provoked and, and wanted all of these territories to be annexed so they can maintain their production. Like you just have to study it yourself, but it is clearly the declar. Now they have something called the declaration of equality within the constitution. They say that Haitian citizens, regardless of color, were all considered black. Mm -hmm. Free. What does that mean regardless of color? See, that's that's where the trick lies. Everybody there was black. If you weren't considered black, you were not you, you were not Haitian. Now, I ask you this with the Tainos Haitian. In that land, the Tainos automatically had to be removed. That's why I tell people, like, really pay attention. Why are you going to give reverence to Tainos when your constitution wrote them off as not existent when they were? I'm saying when they were in the mountains still, they were your neighbors still. So between that and between the amalgamation later on of more Spaniards that kept coming in, Canary Islanders, and then later during Trujillo where a lot of Europeans came in, more amalgamation, it re that's what reduced the blood quantum. But back in 1804, there was people that were on average like 50%, 40%, 60%, 70%, 100% Taino was still there, normal, hundreds of thousands. The history is there. Uh, the next, next level, uh, just don't even try to say that 50% of Haitians have 2% in Taino, because that's not true. 2% have 2%. Not even, not even, less. Barely 1%, barely. Yeah, and less than 1% doesn't count. 
And that's not a blood quantum no. argument. That's but, another thing. But those, that's, but that's, those... That's, an, that's another thing that commie fascist yeah. notorious BGP says. She says that uh, I'm arguing blood quantum arguments if I say less than one percent doesn't does uh, doesn't count. But, but those who do, yeah, we hold them near and dear. We don't want to like those who have the 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 continuation were able to retain like the culture and everything. yeah, th this is not an argument against those people, man. Not at all. Not at all. But it's we're, just uh, we're against the ninety eight percent that have no indigenous blood that are attacking and encroaching on everybody well, else. That's the problem. Exactly. They because are to be invaders. Honest, you, let, let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest. But, no, but, but you know what, King Cash? This, this is a thing. This is a thing. They are. They want to call us cowards. These, uh, like the the commie fascists, want to call Taino people cowards for not repelling Columbus, and then we actually have a whole nother foreign population, and they're thinking that we're not. We should be uh, shut down when we want to protect our people. Hold on, Daddy. We didn't repel Columbus. Like we have a history of rebellions. We were yeah, on a manhunt yeah, against yeah, Columbus, yeah, and guess they, what? They have this thing that supposedly we didn't do it good enough. What? He had to leave. Listen, he fled the island. What are you talking about? Columbus, he was like, we was after him and all of his buddies. We, like, it, he wanted to be eliminated. Like, what are, what are these people talking about? They don't know the history. The problem is this. The reason why Columbus was tried as a criminal in the, under the Spanish crown was because of us. If we've never listen, if there would have never been resistance, it would have never happened. Sharon like the live, Sharon like the live. Uh, King Cash Takara, why do you? Why don't you want me to to fight this this uh, notorious BGP? Why? Um, because like I've said before, I'm after these fake tribes in the DR heavy. And I want it to be like 100% the focal point until these people are tore down. If you want to, like me, I won't participate. If but you, you want this, but you know, but you know that she promotes those big quick. tribes. You know that. But, well, okay, then I'll let you. I'll let you handle it. But I want to handle it at the roots. The problem is, the I understand, but she's so the, the the fake tribes are one of her, or rather, she is one of the tools of the fake tribes. Yes, but there's many. They 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 populate. I understand. Well. Quick, I understand. Real, real, I understand. But she, many of she them. is. Yes, I understand. But notorious BGP, she's trying to make a name for herself as if she's protecting indigenous peoples when she's not. She has a protective uh, character when it comes to American natives, you know, North American natives. What if, the minute it deals with um, with Caribbean natives, she wants it to be a complete African uh, paradise. That's what she's trying to do. Listen, I think you, you uh, personally, in my opinion, I'm not telling you what to do. Some you keep is kind of like, okay, we disagree on our arguments. Keep you set them aside. They're frenemies. They may understand. No, so um, notorious BGP is not a frenemy. Notorious BGP is an arc enemy. She's an arc enemy, enemy and she's a pretendian. She's, I don't think she has the power to, to, to no, be an she, she's, she is an arc enemy because... The arc she, enemies are the organizations that are oh, fake and coming, falsely representing us. She is coming, in the UN. She's coming with a certain authority, being a U.S. military veteran, for having experienced, uh, you know, uh, wartime conditions wherever she was serving, okay? That carries a certain authority and weight. In, in, in a social um, uh, sphere. And then, so she comes with this experience, this military experience. She comes with the uh, knowledge on how to manipulate or move, maneuver in uh, governmental hierarchies, also uh, uh, with a uh, strong military background. Uh, she has gone to education and gotten her, her certifications, whatever, in diversity, equity, and inclusion. She is weaponizing her exactly. uh, military and academic experience against indigenous peoples in a commie fascist method and it's very it is it is genocide and i cannot it doesn't matter she could be my first cousin she could be my sister i have i have practically excommunicated 
people that are uh, sisters, uh, brothers, full-blooded people. I just say, you know what? You're not my family. Get the fuck away from me. I have nothing to do with you. I've done that. Okay? And I keep them there. And I, they have violated so many times that I have to say, I do not see you as family. Okay? So if I do that with my own blood, what more am I going to do with someone who's trying to be on a campaign to violate, destroy, and eliminate my entire nation? I cannot accept them. I cannot uh, give them excuses. I cannot consider them friends, allies, or uh, sympathizers in any way. They are enemies. They are genocidals. They are colonizers. Yeah, there's no diplomacy this with people like that. That is a declaration of war. So no, these um. So, engineer Jack, I listen. I used to be uh, a socialist, Nakami. Like during my college years, all of my friends in college, I don't long. I'm no longer friends with most of them except like two. Um, they were all like this. Let me tell you, from that side, I have experience. These people are military minded they're all on a mission it's like uh like psychological operations mm -hmm. and they're aiming to supposedly deconstruct colonialism by attacking the the american infrastructure they all work all of my colleagues they're all a lot of them went on to the military some of them work in nonprofits. like like uh me worked with the u.n um, did the, the UN uh, internship with me um, in a college, but a lot of them hold positions in government. Almost all of them. They're like teachers. They're, there's three of them in Department of Education. Um, a few of them are, uh, are in other agencies. I don't know. But they purposely chose these roles so they could hijack them to fulfill their political agenda. These people are extremely aggressive. Right under our nose, there's these pro like Cuba commie sympathizers, pro Russia commie sympathizers that are looking to hijack the American infrastructure. And it's right in front of us. And a lot of them also associate with, um, and I'm, I'm not generalizing now, a lot of them also associate with certain groups that align with the Democratic Party, which is very strange to me. Because the, the most anti-democratic people I have ever ran to in my life has been those people. So I don't know why they like democratic when they're completely against it. Exactly. That's what makes them fascists. You know, uh, open borders equals freedom. Closed borders equals racism. What the hell is that? You know, what, what, uh, latrine of of Goebbels did you get that from cross well, she's, she's an actor she's given a script okay so she's yes. not the big fish she's just an no, actor not, find out who's paying her we no. need to go after them no no no, no. no, no yes no, no, yes 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 no, no. I'm, it I, is I, who's paying her she she has a friend that just posted on youtube the conversation that we had yesterday and says that I'm a pretendian, okay? So that's that's how it's a person. We were not talking about pretendianship last night. So where did that narrative come from? That came from her. She's the one that's saying that I'm a pretendian. How does she, quote unquote, get that information? Where is she getting that information from? It's from her friends in the fake tribes. Ooh, okay. Now I get it. Now I get it. You're making, you're just connecting the dots, I see. Well, um, so she's working for a, a like a, an institution similar to um, uh, your your best friend. An institution like my best friend. What's that? Yeah, no, an institution. Um, she's working for one of these uh, government uh, funded institutions or government donated institutions similar. Yeah. to... You have no idea how 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 many tentacles is on this. Uh, you know. Medusa. Oh, um, yeah, uh, you can actually go to I think it's grants.gov. And all you need to do is know how to write a grant. 
and you can apply for hundreds and hundreds of grants. And uh, you submit a you submit a um you know a resume. And if you already have, you know, someone to vouch your grant, you just get paid. There's hundreds of millions of dollars in, in that uh, arena. And they're coordinated with different institutions and so on and so forth. You have no idea how many military veterans that I have met working in these areas, okay? Specifically with indigenous um, uh, rights and, you know, they have this whole thing that they're going to, you know, okay, this is a thing. The government, the federal government and also these, uh, like, commercial entities, they have grant uh, programs that they, they, of course, you know, part of the grant program is that a person has to organize their work, they have to um, submit periodical reports, they have to be very regimented. So they prefer military veterans. They have prefer people with a, a very, um, you know, or a, a, a disciplined background. So that's why military veterans have a very, uh, you know, they have advan advantages because of their professional background to get federal grants and to be able to meet the deadlines because of their experience. But the thing is that they have also undergone severe uh, neo-colonial indoctrination where they think that you know the same uh, hoo-ha thing that they do in Austin, Texas is the same hoo-ha thing that they're going to do in in uh, you know Okinawa or in Ramstein Air Base or in Fallujah, Iraq or everywhere is hoo-ha, hoo-ha, hoorah. You know what I'm saying? Th this is the idea that one doctrine applies everywhere. That they're 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 fascists. In one of uh, I took ROTC in college while I was uh, taking my degree as well, and um, you're not lying about that. So, a lot of the classes, it's, it's clear what they tell you what this is about. You know what they're training you for. You know they're very blunt about it, and anybody who denies it, you know, is is lying. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're literally, even, even though they're outside of the military, some of them still, it's almost like they're still carrying on. Yeah, um, I mean, work. Um, I'm speaking from my through. own, I speak from my own familial experience. My father was a military veteran and he would always say to me, I think he said he served in like, I think it was uh, one, two, three. He served in three war theaters, okay? <clears throat> he served the Cold War theater between you know, the east west german situation he served in uh in vietnam and he served in dominican republic all right three uh two invasions and one occupation situation so um there were some things you know he would say all the time like i never i never uh i i didn't want to uh, shoot anybody I, I just wanted to you know for educational purposes only uh, i just uh, he said i just wanted to uh you know work as a medic so he did he was a medic in the military but he still had to conform to these fascist you know uh practices uh you know the, the boot camp and all of this stuff you know